This episode is proudly supported by Pepe Sayer Australian Cultured Butter, batch churned from single origin cream. We've got a culturing process, a fermenting process, an aging process. So the butter will taste very different than, I guess, the average supermarket butter. Uh, I like to say we make butter makers butter. Like this is the sort of butter butter makers will would like to eat simply because of the slow process in which we ferment and age and, and get the flavour into it. You know, the natural fermentation that gets all the flavours into the cream and then once you churn it, you end up with this really rich, flavoursome butter that evolves and changes because it's a live culture that's in the butter as well. For more information, go to pepisaya.com.au. One of the farmers said to me, that he loves that, you know, he, he, he works on his farm and his leases during the day and his oysters go off to restaurants or, or to the market and he never really sees the end user. And what he loves about the festival is just that connection with the people and they're tasting his oyster that he's put three or four years work into and just makes them feel really good. This is Fish Tales, a seafood podcast. I'm John Sussman. A regional food show can bring various advantages to a community, such as promoting local food, attracting tourism, supporting local businesses, celebrating local culture, and ed- educating consumers on food trends, nutrition, and sustainability. Regional oyster shows are particularly beneficial for local oyster farmers to share ideas as they provide a platform for farmers to come together and exchange information, techniques, and ideas. Rural shows and festivals are also an opportunity for consumers to learn about farming and interact with the farmers themselves. The Naruma Oyster Festival is an annual celebration of oysters that takes place in Naruma on the far south coast of New South Wales. The festival showcases the region's famous rock oysters and promotes the local seafood industry. It features a range of events and activities including oyster shucking competitions, cooking demonstrations, live music and seafood tastings. Visitors can sample the local rock oysters from farms and learn more about the farming processes directly from the farmers. The Naruma Oyster Festival attracts visitors from all over Australia and has become a significant event on the local tourism calendar. Kath Peachy is the tireless organiser of the Naruma Oyster Festival. I'm Kath Peachy. I'm the chair of Naruma Rocks and I'm located in Naruma. Well, John, I'm really the uh, accidental event manager. I um, was working in Canberra um, up in the big house and um, I had a holiday um, house down in Naruma. It was a place that I escaped to every weekend and um, loved it. Felt, you know, really at peace with the world when I was down here. And uh, I was left a job and was doing a little bit of work on a property down here and I saw a call for volunteers for the Naruma Oyster Festival and I thought, oh, I'd been every year. for a few, It'd only been going for a couple of years. And I thought, what a great, great little event that is, a little community event. So I put my hand up and that was uh, about 12 years ago, John. And now I find myself the chair. It's really um, evolved to be quite a significant regional food and wine event. When I first got involved, we were a small community event. Um, we were very much focused um, on... Uh, both celebrating the oyster, but also su- celebrating the town. We had the you know preschool parade, and um, it was more about the music. There wasn't really many oyster farmers involved back in the day, but the idea was to try and get visitors to come to our part of the world. At you know, as you're going into the winter season, Naruma is a tourist town. Uh, really only has a season that runs for about f- four or five weeks a year um, over summer. Uh, and uh, so the idea was to try and get some visitors come to come down, and it and that started to work. But over the, probably the last seven or eight years, um, it's really started to shift more to focus on the produce of the region, the wonderful oysters, of course, the rock oysters, which you know where Naruma is really located, and what we like to think of the heart of rock oyster country, about in the middle of all the estuaries that are growing on the south coast. And it's become a significant, as I said, a significant food and wine event now. Um, so uh, really it, it's an important event. It brings millions of uh, dollars to our region in terms of tourism and it's a wonderful brand building uh, event, not just for the rock oyster industry but also for 
Naruma and the South Coast as a destination. The far south coast of New South Wales is a region known for its natural beauty, including amazing beaches, remote national parks and unique wildlife. The area is famous for its fresh seafood, particularly rock oysters grow in a range of estuaries, each with their own microgeography. The south coast is a popular destination for surfies, fishos, foodies and those seeking a great plate of rock oysters. Well, the south coast of New South Wales is, you know, spectacularly beautiful, I have to say. I mean, there are many beautiful places in the world, but I don't think you'd go past anything more beautiful than a rumour. It, it seriously is world class. But it's also um, uh, a beautiful piece of coastline in the sense that it's lot it's dots, dotted with lots of small villages. And uh, so Naruma is an hour away, an hour away to a sort of bigger regional centre, you know, to the north or the south. It's, uh, we don't have big populations down here, so the environment's really quite pristine. Um, the room is surrounded by beautiful um, crown, crown land and forests, so there's lots of walking trails, um, spectacular mountains. It's dairy country also around us, so rolling green hills. It's a beautiful place to come and, um, you know, be at one with nature and uh, to meet some just really genuine, lovely um, people, regional people. A lot of people like to get out on the water. That's, you know, obviously we're an inlet and we're ocean fronting and um, got an expanse of waterway and not just in the room but in the towns, you know, either side of us and all the way up and down the coast. So people either like to go out to Montague Island, uh, which is about 20 minutes away from the room. It's the, the biggest fur seal colony but a spectacular place to go and uh, it's great to get out near the continental shelf there and uh, where some of the best fish is caught. And uh, or out on the inlet itself. So there's all sorts of tours or you can just hire yourself a little putt-putt and putt around this wonderful waterway. Um, we've got extensive mountain bike trails, but also, you know, if you don't want to go bush, we've got wonderful bike paths all along the ocean front. Um, we're, we're renowned for whale watching. It might be a little early in May, May, but you never know. Sometimes you get a rogue whale wandering through, so it's a wonderful coastline. We've got the best golf course, I think, right on the ocean front. You've got to hit over water at Hogan's Hole, over the ocean. So that's pretty specky if you're into that. Um, and it's just got a good vibe, lots of nice little cafes and coffee shops on the water. So there's lots to do. Food festivals have become a popular trend among consumers due to their celebration of culinary excellence. These festivals showcase the skills of renowned chefs, food artisans and food trucks, offering visitors a chance to sample a variety of dishes, beverages, desserts and of course oysters. Building a program which offers a good mix of all is an art in itself. Uh, well, visitors will be in for a you know, bumper program. Obviously, the rock oysters and the farmers that um, grow them are, are the heroes of the event, and we have farmers coming from seven or eight different estuaries of the South Coast, and Oyster Alley is always a highlight. Visitors get the opportunity to wander along, talk to farmers, taste their oysters, and, um, and they're often blown away by how different the flavour profile is of oysters from one estuary to another. So it's quite, a, I think, a transformative type of experience for guests but they also get uh, we have you know a, a, I think a really um, great cooking program we have celebrated chefs coming down I think what people like about the festival is it's still very grassroots and um, it's not particularly polished but it's uh, it's authentic and people get to talk to these great chefs these great farmers we have other producers obviously dairy farmers and abalone divers and lobster catches and um, so it's an opportunity to talk to the people that that both produce the product but um, but in a really relaxed and authentic way of course there's lots of other entertainment there's great premium dining experiences there's live music there's kids entertainment um, uh, but you know so there's a really jam-packed program for everybody really this year we've got um, a really wonderful a group of chefs coming um, Martin Bosley, who's one of New Zealand's finest chefs and now a fishmonger supplying um, some of the best restaurants, chefs in the best restaurants in uh, New Zealand. He's coming over. He judged in the Royal Sydney Aquaculture Competition this year. 
So this is the first time we've had an international chef on the cooking program and I think he's cooking um, some quick oyster chowder and doing some pretty amazing toppings on oysters. But we've also got the wonderful Colin Fasnage who uh, came to the festival last year for the first time and uh, had such a great time. He's coming back and we're thrilled to have him back. He's a real um, character and a real hero in the food scene in um, Australia and um, we're just delighted that we've got that level of support. And we've also got the wonderful Corey Costello from Rockpool um, Bar and Grill, Courtney Rolston, who is our MC, and she's a pretty familiar face on our screens, TV screens. And um, and then we've got a, a couple of uh, locals in um, uh, Khan Danis from the Bermagui Beach Hotel and um, also Hussain Sahan from Fred's in Sydney. So we've got a really good mix of chefs coming down. Um, we've got uh, you, John, you're, you know, <laughs> one of our heroes down here, big, big celebrity. Um, <laughs> and uh, we've got, um, yeah, so, you know, good good uh, Simon Marnie, who we all know from ABC Sydney. He's got a fantastic reputation for loving his oysters and judging his oysters. So he's going to do some of the emceeing roles. So, it's, look, we've got some wonderful people involved. Uh, I still like to think of the farmers as the stars of the show. The Oyster Shucking Competition at the Naruma Oyster Festival is a fast-paced and exciting event where skilled oyster shuckers from around the country compete to see who can shuck the fastest and the cleanest. A panel of judges evaluates the shucked oysters for quality and appearance. The winner is awarded a prize and the prestige of being named the Australian Oyster Shucking Champion. And with that, the opportunity to represent Australia in the World Shucking Competition in Galway, Ireland. The competition is a highlight of the festival and some say that the crown of champion shucker is more coveted than being a local MP. I think the shucking competition really is the highlight of the festival. It's the race that stops the stops Naruma, that's for sure. Um, it's our Melbourne Cup. But I think what we, we run uh, a shucking championships for both men and women and we, we run them separately. It sounds a little bit old fashioned, but we do it because one of the things we're really trying to do is celebrate uh, the role of women in aquaculture. We weren't getting many female entries when we uh, first started the competition. So it's great to have to celebrate both the women and the men. Um, these these people are just fantastic. They, I think Jim shucked something like 30 oysters in three minutes or just under three minutes last year, which is amazing. Um and we now have we've worked hard to get uh, rights to the Australian Oyster Shucking Championships. It's been really important for the festival to be able to have those those rights. And now we can send our winner of the Australian Championships, whether it's a man, man or a woman, to the World Championships in Galway. And um, that's a bit of a challenge because they're opening a different species of oyster. Um, as we found last year when we brought out Stephen Nolan, the world champion, who had never opened a rock oyster in his life. Uh, but, you know, it's good fun as well. It's great camaraderie that, you know, we've got big LED screens this year, John, because we couldn't get enough people into the marquee. So people will be queuing outside, cheering on their farmer or the estuary that they're supporting, the town they're supporting. It's really quite a wonderful event. The Naruma Oyster Festival is a special event that combines food, culture and community in a way that is both fun and educational. It's a celebration of both the mighty rock oyster and the amazing South Coast region. Well, I think it's a bucket list type of event. It's iconic. I mean, it's we the rock oyster is indigenous to Australia, mostly only found in New South Wales. New Naruma just happens to be located in the middle of, of the estuaries where they're all grown. So it's an opportunity, a rare opportunity to get all those producers in one place to be able to try those oysters um, in one place. Uh, if you really love your oysters, this is not to be missed. Uh, I don't think, uh, I think to the grassroots um, sort of event that it is and the opportunity to get up close to our special guests, whether they're the chefs or media or, or the farmers, you don't get to experience that so much these days when you go to the what I call the really sophisticated food and wine events. Um, we're still a, a you know a really warm, uh, you know, I think genuine event, and I think people love that. Curating an exciting, interesting, and practical program for a food festival is a complex task that requires a lot of thought and planning. 
It involves balancing the needs and preferences of festival goers with practical considerations, staying innovative and fresh, and ensuring the festival is accessible and inclusive to all. Uh, well, certainly a lot of my, my memories that are stand out really either relate to the shucking competition, which I think is, is, a, is a highlight. I think um, when you see Sally Wilde in action with the girls, as well, Sally McLean, she's, she's a married name now, uh, she just is so determined. She, <laughs> the look on her face is, is great when she wins. Um, she's carrying an injury this year, John, so uh, you know we, we don't know how she's going to go. She's a bit nervous. But the shacking comp, I think, is really a highlight. Uh, I do love it when you, you see get more and more farmers involved and you're talking to them each year and um, they are just beaming. One of the farmers said to me, that he loves that, you know, he, he, he works on his farm and his leases during the day and his oysters go off to restaurants or, or to the market and he never really sees the end user. And what he loves about the festival is just that connection with the people and they're tasting his oyster that he's put three or four years' work into and just makes them feel really good. And when he told me that story, it just sort of gave me goosebumps. Organising a regional food show such as the Naruma Oyster Festival, based on a volunteer workforce, can present several challenges, including a lack of experience, availability and commitment issues, consistency and quality control, training and supervision needs, communication difficulties, liability and safety concerns, and of course, financial considerations. Careful planning, communication and management are necessary to ensure the success of the event, whilst maintaining community engagement and support for the future. We have a very tiny team involved in, in organising the Oyster Festival. We, um, it's no easy feat to put on a major food and wine event for 10,000 people in, um, in a regional town when you're sort of four or five hours away from a major centre. So hiring a lot of that equipment has to come from a long way away. Uh, but we've got a Schmick team and our operations team, Carrie Taylor, she, she organises all of that. We've got uh, a wonderful local girl that used to run her own restaurant here, who organi- Belinda, who organises all our premium experiences. And uh, I think we've got seven of them this year, John, so it's a pretty, pretty big job. And um, a wonderful um, marketing um, manager in Sarah Shenhull who gets all our messaging out to people and tells everybody what's going on. But the rest of the event is run by volunteers and I think we've got close to 150 this year, John, and we couldn't do it without them. So uh, they turn up, they love it, uh, they smile, they greet the guests, they know how important the festival is to the town and they all just have a great time. Well, we're reasonably con- um, constrained as a small town in terms of accommodation. So one of the things that we'd like to do is grow the the length of time for the festival and work with some of the little towns around us. So we're, we're looking to create a program of activities where there are other restaurants in other towns or farm gates or tourism operators who are running things on the water, kayaking tours to oyster leases, and try and curate a program that might run over a couple of weeks and give visitors an opportunity to spend a little bit more time in our region and um, get out and explore and then still have this wonderful event um, as we do on the weekend. Um, so that's our, our goal in the, in the medium term is really try and grow the program over a longer period of time and bring more, more of the industry in to be engaged with the Oyster Festival. A strong community leader can make a significant difference in the quality of life of the community they serve. By providing vision, unity, advocacy, resource mobilisation and problem solving, they can build a stronger, more resilient and more vibrant community. Kath Peachy's leadership has been instrumental in bringing together the oyster farming industry, local businesses and the broader community of the south coast of New South Wales. By fostering collaboration, advocating for the industry, creating economic, creating economic opportunities and building community pride, she has made a significant impact on the region's social, cultural and economic fra- fabric. Kath Peachy is a true star of the coast. I'm lucky enough to live in a beautiful place. My home is overlooks the oyster leases and I see how hard they work every day. Um, you know, I've had 20 years in this community and I've, the Oyster Festival has been a real gift for me. As I said, I'm the accidental event manager, but what it's done for me is just I've 
probably just about know everybody in our, in our town, in our region, and uh, it's given back to me in spades. So uh, while it's certainly a, a huge event to be involved in organising, particularly when you've got a very small team and you've got to find a lot of financial support every year to, to stage it, it's all that stress really diminishes when you're at the event and um, you, you know you're seeing your community out and proud and the farmers having a good time it's and all the visitors coming and supporting our community that really is a, a huge reward for me this is fishtails a seafood podcast a deep in the weeds production i'm john sussman Follow us on Instagram at Fishtails Seafood Podcast or email us at fishtailspodcast at deepintheweeds.com.au. Stay tuned for more tales from beneath the surface of the seafood world every Friday on your podcast app.